The unsurpassed, penetrating, and perfect truth is seldom met with, even in a hundred thousand myriad kalpas. Now we can see and hear it. We can remember and accept it. I vow to make the Buddha's truth one with myself. Homage to the Buddha, homage to the Dharma, homage to the Sangha. Well, good evening and welcome, and thank you for coming. It's a joy to see you tonight. This is only the second week-long retreat, well, five days in this case, but the second long retreat we've had since 2019. So we're delighted to be able to invite you all here at this time. I'd like to thank Reverend Master Mayon, our abbess, for inviting me to um, have the opportunity to offer this retreat, and also to thank my late master, Reverend Master G.U. Kennett, who made it possible for all of us to be here. Now I'll get a bit into the teachings that we'll be exploring during the retreat. I chose this topic, which I'm very enthusiastic about, because of the combination of the ordinary and the ultimate that we can find in the paramitas and the four wisdoms. I have a quote from Master Xing Yun, a contemporary Chinese Buddhist master, who says, it is essential that one understand the unity of the ordinary and the ultimate, the commonplace and the transcendental. Ultimate wisdom and ordinary reality are inextricably entwined. They cannot be separated. And that's what is one of the beauties for me of our practice. We do the ordinary things in the mind of meditation, the big mind, if you will. We can't understand this with the intellect, but we can understand it in doing our daily practice. Each day's talk will focus on one of the first four paramitas. There are six of them, and we're going to focus on the first four. And those are generosity, ethical conduct, patience, and diligence, or joyful effort. And on one of the four wisdoms, um, charity, tenderness, benevolence, and sympathy. And what I'll emphasize again and again, these are practices that we can use throughout the day, as well as attitudes of mind that we can cultivate. And they're transformative practices. The title of the retreat is Practices That Lead to Liberation. And you might wonder, liberation from what? Well, in a word, suffering. I can't emphasize strongly enough that these practices transform our lives by turning us away from the self-centered survival point of view that leads to suffering and towards the wish to dedicate all that we do to the benefit of all beings. Now, I'm not talking about leaving our partners, family, and jobs. The beauty of these teachings is in the way they transform the ordinary activities of our regular daily lives by transforming the heart-mind that motivates us. The Sanskrit word paramita, and I'm not certain that that's the pronunciation, but that's what I'll go with, is usually translated as perfection. And another shade of meaning is gone to the other shore. That is nirvana, the peaceful realm of the cessation of suffering. Mahayana Buddhism, to which our tradition belongs, teaches that samsara, our world of suffering, birth, and death, is nirvana. When we allow ourselves to let go of our attachment to suffering, birth, and death. The six paramitas and the four wisdoms show us how to live in thought, word, and deed in order to realize the truth for ourselves and all beings. I want to define a couple of terms here. Bodhi means awake. So bodhisattva 
can mean awakening being, and bodhicitta means awakening mind, the spirit that moves us in the direction of compassion, benevolence, and wisdom. You may have heard of the capital B bodhisattvas, such as Avalokiteshvara, over there in the big painting. Um, Avalokiteshvara, bodhisattva of great compassion. Samantabhadra, bodhisattva of universal goodness. Or Manjusri, bodhisattva of wisdom. But you and I are bodhisattvas too. We could say small b bodhisattvas. When we devote ourselves to putting the Buddha's teachings into practice for the benefit of all beings. So, let's see. Each retreat talk, as I said, I'm afraid I'm repeating myself here, each talk will cover one of the four wisdoms and one of the first four paramitas. We won't neglect the fifth and the sixth paramita, which are meditation and wisdom. There will be several periods a day of formal seated meditation, as well as the opportunity to bring that meditation into every other activity of daily life. And wisdom, every morning we'll study wisdom by chanting the scripture of great wisdom. And I just want to add that none of us would be here without wisdom. We. I mean, I, I hope I don't think of myself as wise most of the time, but we all have an inherent wisdom that lets us know what's good to do. And that's what brought us all here. We'll hear during the talks how the paramitas of meditation and wisdom permeate the other four. In fact, we can take a minute right now to sit up straight and take a deep breath. We can meditate wherever we are, whatever we're doing. I want to say a little bit about the word perfection, which paramita translates as perfection, the six perfections. The word perfection comes from Latin per, which means thoroughly, and facere, which means to make or do. So to do something thoroughly, I read in one place not long ago that to take care is the essence of Zen. So to do something thoroughly with care. One of the meanings of perfection is the act, of pro the act or process of making something sound or excellent. The act or process, notice, not a finished product. And I want to caution us all to be careful, I know I have this tendency, of confusing perfection with perfectionism, which is a way of comparing ourselves to an intellectual ideal. Comparing what we do to something we think we should be able to do. Reverend Master Jiu taught us always to do our very best and that it was enough to do the very best that we are capable of doing in that moment. Not the best we think we should be able to do, not the best our friend can do, but the very best we ourselves are capable of doing at the moment. And we know when we aren't doing it and we can straighten up. That's wisdom coming in again. In the words of the late Zen master, Shunryu Suzuki, we're all perfect just as we are, and there's always room for improvement. <laughs> I love that quote. I remind myself of that all the time. In his book, Describing the Indescribable, Master Xing Yun says this, the six paramitas are the basic virtues of a bodhisattva. They are also a sort of summation of all of the teachings of the Buddha, since they are the perfect unification of thought and behavior. The six paramitas are the highest form of human behavior. Now, the four wisdoms. Great Master Dogen, the 13th century Japanese master who brought the Soto Zen tradition from China to Japan, says, the four wisdoms 
charity, tenderness, benevolence, and sympathy are the means we have of helping others and represent the bodhisattva's aspirations. An aspiration is a strong wish to achieve something high or great. And a religious aspiration is the heart's wish to live as one with the truth. The translation Four Wisdoms comes from Reverend Master Jiu, and I also found some other translations, which are the Bodhisattva's Four Methods of Guidance, Four Elements of a Bodhisattva's Social Relations, and finally, the Four Exemplary Acts of a Bodhisattva. All these translations point to these practices as the way of conduct of a Bodhisattva. Bodhicitta, the awakening mind, all was awakening in the sense of all was going on beyond. In our tradition, we don't sit and meditate all day. We need to prepare meals, clean up, repair things, chop firewood, respond to people, people who want to come here, people who want help with their uh, religious questions. And we do all these things together as a community. So we need to be able to live together in harmony. That's where the four elements of a bodhisattva social relations come in. Charity, tenderness, benevolence, and sympathy. We don't always agree, and we often don't. But that doesn't matter. These four wisdoms, or elements of a bodhisattva social relations, help us learn to bring harmony into our dealing with others. I'll just mention a simple approach to practicing these teachings. One, one approach that someone, some of you might want to try is to take one of the paramitas or one of the four wisdoms and focus on it for a certain period of time, say a day or a week. You can, be, you can begin by noticing how generosity, for example, the first of the six paramitas, enters into your life. Notice when you see someone else practicing generosity and when you yourself are generous. Consider different ways of being generous with time or with attention, with listening, for example, with encouragement, support, or help. And then observe the times when you could have been generous and weren't. What got in your way? But be careful of the judgmental mind. This isn't an exercise in self-criticism, but a way of expanding our view. And there's always room for improvement. The idea for this retreat came up almost a year ago. And it seemed so far in the future. But then time flew by, and here we are. Our life is like this. We can't wait to be 10 years old so that we can have two digits in our age number. <laughs> Remember that? And then suddenly, we're old ladies or old men. <laughs> That's the way our life goes by. And our life has a purpose. It matters what we do and how we do it, what we say and how we say it. We're all small parts of something much greater than ourselves. And we can know that something when we allow our attachment to habitual ways of thinking, speaking, and behaving to fall away. Maybe not in a dramatic burst of illumination, but in the gradual steady change in focus from me, me, me alone to myself together with all living beings. And the six paramitas and the four wisdoms can be our guide in this. I want to close with this quote from Thai meditation master Ajahn Chah. He says, if we people can be free of just this one thing, selfishness, then we will be like the Lord Buddha. He wasn't out for himself, but sought the good of all. With this freedom from selfishness, 
then all the activities of virtuous deeds, generosity, and meditation will lead to liberation. Whoever practices like this will become free and go beyond, beyond all convention and appearance. <laughs>